Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS5 video. So I thought in this video we'd go ahead and discuss the new YouTube exploit that is currently under development, which is being affectionately known as Y2JB for YouTube Jailbreak, which is attempting to use the YouTube application to actually trigger a user land exploit, which could then be used to jailbreak the PS5. It wouldn't allow us to jailbreak any higher firmwares, just the same firmwares that we can currently jailbreak up to 10.01 currently. However, what it would do is allow us a much easier way to jailbreak the console. We wouldn't need a Blu-ray disc, we wouldn't need any of those Japanese games. We would also be able to use digital edition consoles and also consoles that don't have access to a disc drive, like disc edition slims that did not have the drive already paired. We'd be able to use all of those to jailbreak the console, so it'd pretty much be the same across the board for all PS5s, whether you have a fat, slim or pro model. Whether it's a digital edition or a disc edition, it would not matter. They'd all be the same as long as it's on a low enough firmware, which would be great. So that is the advantage of some kind of exploit like this through the YouTube application. And in this video, I'm just going to discuss what we can expect to see with this exploit, what we know so far, because obviously it is still very much in development at this time. There could always be something that could come up that would prevent this from working. But so far, it is looking very promising with the current information that we have available to us right now. So this is all coming to us from Gejine, that is the developer that is working on this. Now there has already been a proof of concept that's been released and this is mainly just to test to see if the exploit is going to be viable on higher firmwares as well. So it's not the actual user land exploit yet, it's more of just a vulnerability that we can see if it's been triggered on the higher firmwares because of course the developer is working on firmware 6.02 but doesn't know if it's going to work on higher firmwares. Now this backup was created on I believe 6.02 which means you need to be on 6.2 or higher of a firmware on your PS5 to test this. But if this does become a full exploit in the future it will work on older firmwares. It's the limitation of 6.02 or higher is just because the backup was created on that firmware right now. But somebody on an older firmware could recreate the exploit, the POC on an older firmware and create their own backup and then you could restore it on older firmwares. So this limitation is not a limitation of the exploit, just the console that the backup was created on. So essentially this backup was released that includes the YouTube application as well as the necessary vulnerability that will be triggered when the YouTube application is launched. And to know whether or not it's working, you see if the YouTube application crashes a while after it's been launched. So to tell if it's working, you launch the YouTube application after restoring that backup file. And then when you launch it, it will crash the YouTube application after the sign-in screen appears, as you can see here. So that is what happens with that proof of concept. And apparently people up to 10.0 and 10.01 have tested it and it is still working. And that's the highest jailbreakable firmware so far, which means we should be able to use this to load the latest jailbreak, the LAPS kernel exploit, all the way up to firmware 10.01. And it looks like it will probably work on higher firmwares too, if we ever get any new kernel exploits for higher firmwares, which is fantastic. So that's the situation so far. You can try the POC yourself if you want to test it on your own firmware. It's not really necessary since we already know pretty much what firmwares it works up to now. But if you want to test it, of course, all you need to do is make a backup of your own PS5 to a USB drive using the backup and restore options. Use the backup method to create your own backup and then copy it somewhere safe on your computer. And then you just copy the PS5 folder from the POC backup onto the root of the USB drive, making sure the USB is in XFAT format. And then you can plug that USB in and use the backup and restore options to restore that backup, which will get the YouTube application installed with the proof of concept test audit. So when you load the YouTube application, it should crash the application after a few seconds to know that it's working. But again, it's not really necessary for most people to go out and do that because it's already been tested by other testers at this point. It's probably better to wait until we actually have a user land exploit implemented in this with a backup file for that that we could restore that could then be used to trigger the jailbreak, which is not currently available yet. This is just a proof of concept test for now. So to recap the developments, the first sign we got was this post showing a Hello World HTML file being loaded before the PlayStation sign-in screen appears, but the page was only loading for two seconds before it automatically closed. This was then bypassed in the next example, showing a page being loaded with a timer that is continuing to run after the PlayStation sign-in screen appears, so we don't need to actually bypass the PlayStation sign-in page to be able to access the full application, as the app can be exploited without signing in to PSN without bypassing that section. 
And not long after that, we're now at the point where a vulnerability has been triggered that is actually causing the YouTube application to crash. So the idea behind this is that the YouTube application does not actually use the same WebKit that the PlayStation 5 normally uses. The built-in browser is based on Apple's WebKit, and that's the one that has a lot of security patches that we've not been able to get a new WebKit exploit for to be able to use the browser to jailbreak in quite a while since 5.50 on the PS5. But with the YouTube application, it's actually using its own browser package that's based on Cobalt and some kind of Mozilla version, it seems. So it's using something completely different. And we can also run older versions of the YouTube application. We can see on Prospero patches, there's lots of different YouTube versions available for the PS5 going all the way back to version 1.002 which works all the way down to firmware 2.0 on the PS5. These older versions of the YouTube app are more likely to be vulnerable to more exploits that could be used to trigger a user land exploit. It looks like the version that Gadgetnet is using at the moment is actually version 1.003, so not the oldest one on Prospero patches, which is 002, but 003 seems to be the one uh, which requires 4.03. There may be more vulnerabilities that are being used in version 003 than 002. So that might be why 4.03 is going to be the lowest firmware compatible here. And the idea is that Gejine can install one of these older YouTube applications onto a console that already has a jailbreak so that they can install it with the debug settings. And then once it's installed, they can apply whatever kind of exploit to it and then create a backup of the PS5 that can then be restored onto your console or my console to have a working version of the YouTube application that we can run that will then trigger a user land exploit, which could then be used to trigger the kernel exploit and jailbreak the console. That is the general idea. Now there have been some more recent updates. We can see here the PS4 YouTube app apparently requires a license, so it will not work on the PS4. So that kind of kills the idea of this translating over to the PlayStation 4. This may be a PS5 only option here. So that's all the information we have at the moment. It is looking very promising, but obviously you have to take things with a grain of salt. We don't actually have a user land exploit implemented in this yet. So we'll have to wait and see how things develop. There could always be some unforeseen issue that prevents this from working. So, you know, it's, it's looking very promising so far, but we just have to wait and see. I don't want to guarantee anything yet until we actually have some kind of user land exploit that is built in here. There's other media applications also. So if this one doesn't work out, it's possible some other media applications might be more viable. Now, another thing that was also posted by the developer, I just want to mention here, we can see YouTube PSN sign in pop up disable patch. You need version 1.003 version of YouTube and the new items flow from lightning mods, which is not available yet, made this patch so I can debug easily. So this is not required for the exploit, just to be clear. The idea here is just to make it easier for the developer to try and work and develop this exploit. They want to be able to just easily bypass the PlayStation sign-in. It must make it easier for them to kind of test things. And because of that, they've developed an XML patch that can be applied through items flow to the YouTube application so that they can bypass that sign-in screen. So this items flow patch is not required for the end user to actually run the exploit. It's just making it easier for the developer to actually test things to try and create the exploit in the first place, just to kind of clarify that as well. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Just a quick video there. So hope you guys enjoyed this one or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.